So welcome to uh, our second tea time. And uh, today we're going to focus a bit on anxiety because I think most people in this room, probably most people on the planet at the moment are understandably feeling anxious about everything that's going on in the world. Whether you're watching the news or not, uh, there's just lots of things to be anxious about. And I think probably because it's come on us so suddenly that it is not just the situation, but also the shock of it all, and trying to get to grips with the fact that it's different, it's not nice, and um, it's hard. And I think it's hard for everybody, whether you were already um, used to being at home, or for those who were working and aren't used to being at home, you've got all sorts of new situations, you've got worry about everyone you know being safe, apart from yourself, even basic things like how do you get your food and um, look after yourself in the way that you took for granted before. So I've been reading lots of different things this week about messages that this is supposed to send us and maybe it's all meant for a great reason so that we live in a different way. And I think that may be true in the longer term, but in the very short term, it is tricky. And so I really wanted to focus on things that you can do to help yourself with anxiety. When we set up the idea of these tea times, we thought that we'd have it as a chat and everybody can talk to each other and swap ideas. And we still want to do that. But today I'm going to show you a short presentation which gives you some self-help tips. And re really, we'd like your feedback to know whether you want to have little presentations as well as the chat or whether you just want it to be chat. And I have actually lined up a few speakers to talk to us about different aspects of well-being and relationships and just mindset and, and psychology and so on. So there's going to be all sorts of different things going on. And we just like to have your feedback to know whether this is comforting to you and whether we're covering the subjects that you want covered, because we want this to be your place that you can come for a bit of respite to get some uplift bit of wise advice, a bit of community, so that you all um, feel that you've got some support and somewhere to go at, around this time of day. So um, I know, um, for those of you that are here, the other day you probably heard me say that I've had a couple of really major shocks in my life. And so I know how it feels to not want to get out of bed in the morning or to find it really difficult. And I think that structuring your day is a really important way of going about it and so we'll go through the little presentation first of all and then we can talk more about any things that you're facing and concerns and see if i can answer your questions i think somebody isn't on mute so if you could just strike through your microphone so that you're on mute so we haven't got any background noise um, i think lisa finn you're registered here twice i don't know why um, and one isn't on mute, so I'll just see. I'll maybe just. Somebody in the room wants there. Is she? Oh, we've got Lena, we've got Lisa Pitton twice. Yeah, exactly. So just see if I can remove that one and uh, see whether that will do it. Okay. So um, I think, Julie, you're going to share your screen, not you, for the slides. So we'll just go straight into that and um, go through these, and then we'll have plenty of time left to chat. Just one second, or we'll to chat. Can you see those, Mary? Yes, I can. So um, just if you just move on to the next one. So there are lots of different things that you can do. And I think that making sure you look after yourself on a number of levels is probably my first recommendation. So when I couldn't easily get out of bed, I would just make myself get up and turn on some music and do some stretching and some exercising and to make myself eat regularly even though I didn't really feel like eating sometimes when you're anxious you feel quite queasy your appetite goes it's hard to eat but it's really important to make sure that you are nourishing yourself and if you can't face heavy meals then the last um, this week and last week I've been making soups just fresh soups with herbs and those go down nicely it's not too heavy maybe you're not doing the same level of activity that you were before so you need to be mindful that you may not need as much food as much fuel for your body 
we'll be talking about activity as well in a minute. But I just make sure that your diet is wholesome and satisfying and that you feel nourished by it because that's making sure we know that women have very often got nutritional deficiencies. So making sure that you're not making the situation worse and that you're helping yourself. So other things that you can do are um, laughing out loud. And I know you probably don't feel like laughing, but watching, even if you go to YouTube and find some of the old clips from comedy shows or things that made you laugh once, to put them on and see if you can get it to work again. Um, and also to make sure that you've got time. I'd say you probably need about half an hour twice a day for yourself. And that could be time to read quietly. It could be time to look after yourself, to do your nails, to make sure your hair looks nice or just to do a session of relaxation, but something that's going to mean that you're nurturing yourself. And I think that's really important. So um, on to the next one, Julie. Oops, sorry. I've already had a tweet. Sorry. Okay. Um, keeping in touch is really important. And as I said the other day, we're really blessed now. We've got WhatsApp and FaceTime and things like Zoom. So we can keep in touch. And I've heard of lots of people having gatherings and parties um, on FaceTime and Zoom and WhatsApp so that they're staying in touch. In fact, a lot of people are staying in touch much more than they were before because they were living life in the fast lane and they were far too busy to really be in touch with even their best friends sometimes. So now we've got the opportunity to be in touch with our family, with our friends and um, even people that we worked with and we were in close proximity with, we may be working like pods in the London Eye at home now, but we can still link up on Zoom and we can have a WhatsApp chat group going in the background. There's just lots of ways to stay in touch. And that I think it's very heartwarming. And also, if you can keep in touch with people that you know are feeling lonely and anxious, that will be something that you can do that will help to ease your anxiety because it releases endorphins and other feel-good hormones that, that allay your anxiety. So I think that's important. And doing the gratitude that I talked about, sorry, somebody isn't on mute. So could you please put yourself on mute because we've got a little bit of background noise and just strike through your microphone if that's okay. Julie, can you just see if there's anybody that you can find? Um, and keeping the gratitude list and reviewing that and just even writing down maybe your feelings or a poem or anything that you feel called to do. And the other thing too is to do some coloring, sometimes drawing or doodling or the, there are little mindful coloring books that you can get that you can sit, put some nice music on and do some drawing or write something down. Maybe even remind yourself of something that a time when you felt great and close your eyes with the music on and just revisit that in your head so that you get again that sense of well-being because the situation we're in at the moment for most of us it's not permanent for most of us it's transient and things will return to normal again but right now it's tricky so on to the next one please Junie. so Again, I can't stress keeping yourself mentally active so that you have a schedule for your day. So when you get up in the morning, you make yourself a timetable. You get up, do your exercise. If you feel, wake up and you feel terribly anxious because when your cortisol levels go up, that's the stress hormone. You can sometimes wake up early in the morning, about five o'clock in the morning, feeling like you've just been given an electric shock. And to get those cortisol levels down, you need to do all the things that are going to make your heart sing. So all the things that make you feel relaxed. And what I tend to do is um, I use the Paziz app and I just take some herbs and put the app on in my ears so that I can do 20 minutes or half an hour laying in bed to get calm again and then get up and start the day. So that's a, a really good tip. If you're not taking antidepressants, I'm going to be talking about some of the 
herbs that you can take, the, what we call adaptogenic herbs that will help you. So anything you can do to relax yourself. So um, if you've got someone around who can give you a massage, even massage your shoulders, ask them to do that. You can do it back to them. The other thing you can do is a head massage. So you can just, if you're on your own, you can massage your head. You've got um, little acupressure points on your temples that you can press just to and massage your neck and shoulders where you can reach them. Maybe um, with some aromatherapy oil that smells nice. I like lavender oil and there's lots of other nice smelling oils that you can use, but even having a bath to relax yourself and put some soothing music on. So just trying to make sure that you've got some quiet time. And if it's really hectic at home to take yourself off into a quiet room for some time during the day to do some proper formal relaxation. So um, we'll uh, send, we can send you out a link to the Paziz app. We've got a 50% discount code if anyone's interested in that. But equally, there are other things that you may have already or things that you can find online that you can use that will help to relax you. So on to the next one, Ginny, please. Um, sleep's important. Obviously, we're going to do a separate one session on sleep, but um, because sometimes it's very hard to sleep when you're feeling anxious. Um, having herbs at hand will help you, but having sleep hygiene is important. So that means trying to go to bed at the same time each night, not doing anything electronic. So you don't want to be plugged into anything on your phone or your iPad before, just before you go to sleep. Um, if you're feeling really anxious, you may not even want the backlight of your Kindle. You may want to read an ordinary book to help you go to sleep. And you may also want to take some supplements. Um, there are several adaptogenic herbs and um, we can talk about some of those. I think, have you got some on the next slide, Julie? No, I just did the, just did it. Okay, okay so um, some of the herbs, the adaptogenic herbs are things like rhodiola and ashwagandha and holy basil. So you can take those um, in either pill form or you can get drops and you can use, for example, holy basil, you can put some drops in warm water and use it like a, res a rescue remedy. Um, ashwagandha you can take early in the morning, you can take it during the day, same for rhodiola. And if you have got high cortisol um, and you need some help to bring it down, then we can um, give you some extra one-to-one -one help. But it is important to really focus on doing all the things that are gonna make you feel better. So I talked the other day about having um, affirmations that you can use. So if you're, you suddenly feel this rising panic, you can uh, have a strategy. So my strategy was always to have my affirmations about all is well, things that would help me to focus on the present and just really take, close your eyes, take a few really deep breaths and then eventually open your eyes and focus on something really lovely, whether it's a spring flower or a picture of something lovely. Now, the other thing is that there are, if you go onto YouTube and again, we can send you some links, there are some amazing TED Talks on breathing. And you shouldn't underestimate the importance of breathing because we often forget to breathe, especially when we're feeling anxious and especially if we're having a panic attack. But the breathing exercises are absolutely amazing. And in fact, we might even do one session just on breathing because by the bre breathing is very structured the way the experts do it. And you need to do at least seven calming breaths and take the breath in and hold it when you've got it in and then let it out really gradually. And so it does help you to calm down. So I, I think that if you're suffering with anxiety, you need to have a whole string of things that you're doing for yourself and do them at different times of day, depending on some of them can be reactive when you're feeling anxious. So they're like first aid measures and other, the others can be preventive. So you keep try and keep yourself in a decent mindset. And then the other thing is that when you speak to other people or see other people that are feeling anxious, anxiety can be contagious. So, which is why watching the news a lot can just make you feel more anxious. 
So it's better on off if it, you'll be better off if you just carry on being in your own little world and doing as many nice things as you can for yourself and the other people around you and nourish yourself as much as you can, do as much relaxation, good breathing, take the herbs if you need to take them, talk to everybody. If you need expert help, get expert help. But if you can just get by by sharing the load with your friends. Um, I know Julie's been linking up with her friends in different parts of the country and abroad and having sessions that are booked into the diary like meetings so that you can actually meet up, have a glass of wine or um, cup of tea or whatever it is, and that you're talking to people, supporting other people and making yourself feel really good at the same time. So I think um, though, certainly those are the things I found have helped me. The other thing that um, has helped a lot, helped me a lot anyway, is um, reading. So I didn't read, I love reading novels. In fact, when I was a teenager, I used to go to the library on Fridays and nudge the old ladies out the way when they had all the new books coming in, um, all the, the romance novels that I used to love reading to get my pick for the week. And obviously over the years, I've been so busy writing books and running advisory services and things like that. And so I'm dealing with children. I never really had time to read novels. But when Ben got sick, um, I, um, I decided that I would go back to reading novels. And I found some amazing authors, people like Jojo Moyes, um, Lucinda Riley, Santa Montefiore. And most of those have got loads of books, which will keep you busy for ages and ages. And um, I think swapping titles with other people is good. And maybe even reading the same books as other people and then reviewing them once a week and talking about them, um, recommending other books to each other um, sharing things you've got on your Kindle, if you have a Kindle, is another good idea. Um, and then the other thing that really helped me a lot after Hester died was watching movies. And I found that the only way I could really get rid of my grief and sorrow temporarily was by immersing myself in a film. And I, I still find that now, if I'm feeling a bit tense and uptight, if I sit down and watch a rom-com or something absorbing, um, I can really disappear for a couple of hours. And so I think, again, that's something you can do, um, doing, playing games with your family, doing anything, um, even if you've got a wee fit or something and you've got kids at home, even if they're grown up kids, you can all put some music on and do some dancing together. And that helps to get the endorphins rising and get you laughing and making you feel a bit better. So those are kind of my tips on anxiety. So. Anybody got any other tips that they'd like to um, add in then uh, or anything they've been doing? Uh, if you've been doing something for yourself that's working for you, we'd love to hear from you. So um, rather than just going around the room and everybody introducing themselves again today, I think it's probably best if anyone's new and they want to introduce themselves, feel free. But if you've got any tips and tricks that you'd like to share with us, then we'd love to hear from you. So who'd like to go first? Ladies, can I ask you to switch your camera on if you have one? If you go to the bottom left-hand corner and just press the button that says start video, it'd be lovely to see you all. <laughs> I, know, I know that Sarah said that she doesn't have a camera or microphone, so she's just going to put her questions in the box if she has anything to say. But it'd be lovely to see you all. Brilliant. Hi. Great. Lovely to see you. So anybody who'd like to... Julie, you've been doing some things. Do you want to kick off? Yeah, so and I'm not really Marion Stewart. I just came in as her on the on the Zoom. So I'm Julie and I work with Marion for all those who don't know me. Um, I've been doing quite a few good things. I um I do my pizzes when I wake up in the morning and I just do a sort of 10, 15 minutes, which just helps sort of relax the day and know you calm me down at the beginning of the day. Um and I have a couple of regular calls most days with friends around the world, and we've created like a little group. We meet on Zoom and catch up, which is actually quite different because we haven't been doing that for a very long time. In fact, I think I've spoken to my best friend from school more in the last 10 days than we have in about the last two years. So that's fun. And the other thing, Marion talked about a gratitude list. I do something slightly different. At the end of the day, I write on a piece of paper something that I'm grateful for that day, something that's been lovely that's happened. And it might be something fabulous, like you've met someone or had a great meeting or but it might just be something like I saw some really nice roses down the road and then I put them all in a big 
jar. I've got a big jam jar. I bomb my mum. I had a big double sized one. And I put them in there. And then when I'm having a really down day, I throw them out all over the table and look at them and remind myself of the good things. And I've made them out. I've, I've cut up like my Christmas cards and birthday cards. So they're all on really nice little pictures. And it's really cool. I really enjoy doing that. And it actually really does help um, in that sense. So it'd be lovely to hear whatever else you, everyone else does. Okay. Any volunteers? Danielle. Yeah. yeah? Hello everyone, um, I work with Julie and Marion and on and off <laughs> and um, I think it's really important to have a routine every day so I think I pretend that I am still going out about my normal day so you know we still get up at the same time we used to get up and so and then just make sure I have a schedule throughout the day of things I enjoy doing, lots of painting, um, getting in touch with people that I haven't spoken to for a long time. And the other thing that's been really great is that we've set up a support group in our street. So we've got a WhatsApp group for everybody in our road and I've done some shopping for some elderly folk who can't get out because they're, um, they're not allowed to go out at all because of their age or medical conditions. So I do, I'm doing shopping for them um, and volunteered with the NHS volunteer service so that we can help people who need to talk or are lonely. So it's just, I think, go out, get fresh air, breathe, look at the sunshine and, and just look at, take advantage of what is out there. Nature's loving this at the moment. You know, the air is so fresh. There are no planes going over. Um, we've had a peregrine falcon. We've had um, owls and a woodpecker and we can hear them all and see them now where we, we couldn't before because of traffic noise. So I think there's lots of positives out there. We have to find them and look for those rather than concentrating on the negatives. Yeah, I think so. And it's, I think it's kind of new normal, isn't it? It's just getting used to this really weird state that everyone's in, yeah. um, um, trying to work out how to, in a way, make the most of the opportunity yeah. to live in a different way. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, thank you for that. That's really interesting. So Lisa, you're, you have something to tell us. Lisa Finn. If you unmute yourself. There it is. Hi, 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 hi. Um, I, um, I'd mentioned the other day, um, so I put out on Facebook to my friends that um, I, when I was a young kid, I used to make um, handmade, handmade cards. So I have a list of addresses of people that have come in. And so today I'm going to draw and color and make, I can't draw anything, maybe a stick figure, but <laughs> I'm going to, um, do that for my friends and something really positive uh, yesterday was um our my um husband and i's anniversary so we uh picked two things from our favorite restaurant that they didn't have to cook you know smoked salmon i ate salmon marion <laughs> <laughs> so we went and got the um the food from the restaurant i had we had some great hors d'oeuvres i set the table with our china and our silver and uh crystal glasses and we ate and we actually danced in the living room oh that's amazing that is really that's good yay Absolutely. thank you fantastic okay that is really good and i think you know you can do the thing is you can do that and i think that's amazing because it's important and um i i at the weekend we did dress for dinner do you know yeah. i said to my husband you know what I haven't put shoes on for three days. Yeah, I know. <laughs> with no shoes on. I thought, you know what? Let's go and get dressed for dinner. And I and it was just fun to do that. So I think you can. Thank so you. Brilliant. Who else has got something to share? Yes, go ahead. So who? Um, who's Mrs. Tony? If you unmute yourself. Yeah, sorry, it says Mrs. Tony. It sounds a bit formal, but I'm a teacher and I'm doing some online teaching. So <laughs> it says Mrs. rather than my. My name's Karen. I'm another Karen. See the Karen bottom left there. Okay. So, yeah, so I've been trying to do that, uh, offer help to um, stressed parents. You know, I'm only part time in my job. So um, trying to offer help in the meantime. Um, so if anybody needs that, I've been doing a bit of that through Zoom. Um, helping neighbours, like Danielle said, um, trying to get that daily walk in yep. and, and gardening. I'm not really yes. a gardener, um, but I've decided to plant a few things. I had some seeds and uh, hopefully that will give us a bit of hope as those come up. So, 
Yeah, no, I think it's really important to and, and look at doing new things. I mean, I, um, I haven't done any knitting for years, but a couple of weeks ago, I started knitting teddy bears for my yes, grandchildren. Yes, I've been doing a bit of knitting. Yeah. And I just thought it was so therapeutic to just sit and knit. And, and they grabbed them when I gave them to them. And now I'm knitting them clothes. So when I meet <laughs> them on Zoom, they ask me to show them the clothes. You know, can you please, haven't you sewn that up yet? So I have these strict orders about what they, what they want me to knit next. So, you know, it's, I wouldn't have been doing that before. I've been working till 11 o'clock at night. So now yeah. it's, it's, it's different, but it's, um, it's therapeutic and it's fun. And how are people I, finding sleep? Because sleep's been a problem for me through, through menopause, but how are, how are other ladies finding that? Shall I unmute so that they can, people can say? Shall I mute, yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, anyone, is anybody, I mean, I'm going to do, a, we'll do another session on sleep because I think sleep is tricky. And I know that that is a problem for people going through menopause. So anybody, has anybody got anything that helps them in particular? Shez. Yes. Shez. Got, sorry. Can I just say I've got something from Sarah because she obviously yes. she can't talk. So I just wanted to read it out so she didn't feel left out. So Sarah says, my husband will be 50 next week and we had a cruise book for the past year and a half. Obviously that's been cancelled which is quite upsetting. We've booked an Airbnb in the middle of nowhere instead, and we can still enjoy the day and be together, even if it's not as we planned. Making the most of what we have is all we can do, I guess. Yeah, no, I think that is a shame, but hopefully what you can do, you can actually sit and plan out what, where you're going to go next when things get back to normal. So you can have some nice time uh, trying on different locations. Um, and hopefully that will be therapeutic as well. So, uh, Shez, you had some ideas about sleep, did you? If you can unmute yourself. Hello, I'm Shez. Nice to meet you all. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> um, so I struggled with sleep for a long time because I had um, heightened anxiety, but fortunately I've had some help with that and been able to get on with that with a lot of uh, different methods. Um, but sleep was the main problem and I've downloaded a fantastic app on my phone called Calm. I don't yes. know if anyone's heard of it. It's quite popular, but on there that you've got bedtime stories for adults, you've got um, songs that you can listen to that help you drift into a nice sleep, that sort of thing. It just helps you wind down before you go to sleep and you need like a good half hour to an hour before you go to sleep to get into that rhythm. So I don't watch TV before bed or anything like that now. I just put that on. If I feel like I've had a stressful day, I think that's the first thing I think about. I put that on and then I don't have any problems sleeping after that. So I don't know if that's going to help. Yeah, I think all those tools are amazing. I think um, quite a lot of our patients use Calm um, as well as Paziz. Uh, there are some really good tools out there. And I think we should, at this point in time, be taking... Um, the opportunity to try them out and see which ones work for us the best yeah. and sometimes you can use different things at different times of the day so calm um, can work during the day as well as in the evening but mm -hmm. um, equally I tend to um, I tend to use the Paziz app to recharge as well as help to get you back to sleep it has a, um, a sleep program in there so if people wake up in the night they can just plug in the earphones and it helps you drift off again and during the day it has a nap program so that you can plug into that for 20 minutes or half an hour and it's like um, plugging your phone into the mains it makes you feel like you've had a recharge so it's um it is really something you can do to help you calm down as well as feel rested so julie do you want to say something yeah tracy wants to say something okay go ahead tracy oh hi Hi, Tracy. Hi, Marion. Sorry, girls. I, every time I put my face on, the volume goes, so I don't know what's happened. Oh, right. Don't I'm worry. I'm putting myself so I, you can see me, but then everybody disappears, so I, I'm not very good with technology. Oh, well, how can <laughs> um, you give some help? Yeah, yeah. What I've found, um, I've, I do yoga and, of course, can't practice, and it's a bit boring practicing at home. The yoga studio that I don't actually go to, but I was going to try, they're doing online yoga. So for £16 a month. So I'm going to have a go at doing that. So at least you feel you're with other people through Zoom. 
Okay, there's, um, there's also, you can do that by all means, but there's also a girl called Adrienne, who if you go to YouTube, she does um, a 30 day yoga challenge and it's free. And you can do, you can watch that on your TV. You can get it, if you've got a smart TV, you can get, actually get it on your TV and you can do yoga with her on the TV. So you can oh. try, well, there are so many amazing tools that you can use. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, she's really, I like her a lot. There are some paid courses you can do after that if you really like her, but um, it's, and, you, and then you don't feel so alone somehow if you've got other people in a class on your telly. <laughs> it looks yeah. like you've got company. So that's something else you can try. But yeah, I think I'm a great fan of yoga. I think doing some yoga stretching in the morning is important. Um, when I'm finished here today, a bit later on, uh, my parcel has arrived. And in my parcel is um, a, a self-assembly hula hoop. So I'm going to be um, doing my hula hoop at, while the TV's on in the evening because I thought, you know, you can't get around much, uh, even if you, you're only allowed to go out once a day or whenever you do it. So I kind of do my exercise at home in the morning, I go out for a walk later on, but I thought to get some extra activity, I might um, get back to doing my hula hoop. So I'll let you know how that goes. <laughs> go ahead, Jane. There was another message from Leslie on the chat saying that she's heard that the Open University are doing some free courses, which might be a really good opportunity to learn something new. Oh, absolutely. They that would are be fantastic, wouldn't it? I yeah. do, I've done the one, a few of them from Harvard. Um, if you go to something called udemy.com, they do lots of courses and a lot of them are free. And then I've done some really interesting things like on climate change, and all sorts of things, but some of the really best people from Harvard, it was amazing. So can we put these as links into our Facebook, our midlife switch group? do you think, all these lovely suggestions, and then people can actually go in there and follow the links. I think maybe that would be... Yeah, the other thing, ladies, I was going to suggest the other day, Marion, we did a blog very recently on anxiety, which is where I created the slides from today, and I was going to send it to everybody because I thought it might be useful sometimes just to keep reading over things, and it's got some more useful tips in it, and it's got some of the things like pizzas in it, so I will be sending that out um, probably later today to everyone who came, so that's helpful to everyone. But it would be nice to have um, a directory of courses as well that people can do because some people have more time on their hands and they can go and do those things. Um, I was talking to somebody from Boston the other day and she said that the, you, the, you can do virtual museum tours as well around the world. So you can go online and log in and take these amazing tours that you would never have dreamt of taking in all parts of the universe to um, you know, whether you want to be in Sydney or New York or wherever it is, you can go in, into their museums. So that's something yeah. else that you can do. So I think there are tons of things. It's actually mind boggling. And I don't think, because certainly I've been so busy living life in the fast lane, I haven't really had time to stop and think about any of these things. They were kind of filed away as a luxury for later in my life. So, but that time's arrived for us now. So we should, um, and because we've got this wonderful connection through the internet, then um, I think it's really important. So anybody else got any tips or tricks that they're using at the moment? Lisa said to tell everybody they're doing them around the zoos as well, which would be really fun to go and see the animals, won't it? Oh, zoos, amazing. Oh, that is amazing. Can that I ask any of you? And that would be fun for, and for kids as well. If you've got children or grandchildren, that would be fun for them, wouldn't it? If anybody has anything they want to share that they've found on those, if you send it to me at julie at marionstuart.com, we'll make a place on the website, on the, um, on the Facebook group, where people, we'll just keep adding to it. But that would be really good if people find really interesting things. I know I'm going to watch something at the opera in a couple of weeks' time. The, National, the Royal Opera House are doing ballet and opera from the Opera House, which you know I can't afford to go to most of the time. So it would just be amazing to see that in my living room put it on my big screen it'd be fabulous so and they're doing i think they're doing that uh from the met in new york as well so i think again there's all sorts of concerts and and the other thing i found in the last few weeks i've been posting them on social media is some of these amazing iconic um pop stars are doing all sorts of impromptu concerts do you know it was just amazing to just suddenly stumble upon one of them and be invited into someone's front room so the other day I was just happened to be watching something on Facebook and all of a sudden this guy popped up, said, oh, I'm Chris. Can you hear me? 
he leaned forward and I said to my husband that's Chris Martin and I thought wow and then he just did a whole half an hour and it was incredible so I think that if you find anything as well share them bring them here sh tell us about them so we can share them with other people as well because it, it, I, I just found that completely heartwarming it makes you forget about everything that's going on in your life and just you just focus on something that you never dreamt that you'd be in Chris Martin's front room for half an hour <laughs> and you could request things that he would sing and he'd sing them for you and call out your name. It's just amazing. So you can, uh, and then that concert I found the other day, did, I don't know if any of you saw that. It was no. the, Sorry, did you see that? In the snow. No, not the one in the snow. That was the guy playing the cello in the snow on top of a mountain. This was, um, it was the uh, Antwerp, I think it was, Philharmonic Orchestra and that they all came together. Um, it wasn't Zoom, I thought it was Zoom, but it looked like Zoom, like this, where they all came together and played a whole, um, it was just for about five minutes, and they even had singers. It was just, it just stopped me in my tracks. It was so uplifting. So again, we can, I think I did post those in the group. You, you should be able to see them if you go into um, the Midlife Switch group on Facebook. Um, I'm trying to post as many things in there as I can so that people just stop and breathe and, um, just remember there are some really wow things going on in the world as well as all the rubbish at the moment. So just keep things in perspective, I think. Anybody else got anything that they'd like to share? Sue. Okay. Hi. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I was going to say I subscribe to Yoga with Adrian and she's great. Yeah. Um, she also does specific videos. So she'll do yoga for anxiety, for instance, which is really good. Uh, also, there's a choir called the Couch Choir. Who've been, oh. It's like an online choir, and if you look them up on YouTube, they've done a recording recently that's so uplifting. It's called um, Close to You, I think, and it's just lovely. Um, and also, I was just going to say sitcoms like Frasier and Friends, they're quite useful at the moment because they're just 25 minutes long, but you're just guaranteed to laugh, so it sort of changes your mood. Yeah, no, I agree with you, actually. I think it's important to go back. And there's a, there are so many programmes on, ben and I usually watch some, we take it in turns to pick things to make each other laugh in the evening. So just something short. And um, and the other thing that you can do as well is while you're having dinner sometimes, um, if you've got something like Alexa or something that plays music, you can take it in turns to request songs that you like or songs that will make each other laugh and just to kind of keep that going. So you've got a, a different theme going on. So we sometimes do that as well. So. I think we are spoilt for choice, really, when, when we think about it, of all the different things we can do. It's just maybe having a directory of all these tools will be good and um, we can compile it. So that would be really nice. It will be uh, that we can put together for other people to help them too. Anyone else? Anything that they've got to offer? Okay, so what, um, what I wanted to ask, because obviously going forward, we're going to be doing these on a regular basis. So I want to find out from you, what do you like to come together to just chat and ch exchange ideas? Would you like uh, more little presentations? Like, for example, if we do one on sleep, would that be popular? Um, do you, would you like, if I get some experts along, I've got a um, mindfulness expert, I've got a um, couple of different psychologists, um, people that can just help us to cope. Are you interested in that kind of thing? That, if we just keep the sessions short so that they just do give maybe 10 minutes and then you can ask them questions. Um, is that something that you'd like? Yeah, okay, I think that's kind of general consensus. That seems to be quite popular. And then if you've got any um, additional ideas about what you'd like to hear about, um, if there, so for example, Danielle, I know that you've started painting in the last few years. Uh, I love painting, but I'm a bit hopeless at it. I'm kind of probably more abstract than anything, but I, but I like doing it. So maybe to, if there are things that are popular, if people would like to learn how to paint, or if you've got hobbies. Videos on YouTube um, with lessons, they don't cost you anything and you can watch people and you don't have to be good. You know, you just have to start. Start yeah. somewhere and you'll be surprised how good you become just with practice. It's great fun. 
or not in my case, but you can enjoy it even if you're not good at it. <laughs> to like, you know, I'm rubbish at lots of things that I enjoy doing, but you can still enjoy them. So it's all about that's... taking part. Yeah, yeah, I okay. think so. So ladies, so, tomorrow we have to move the session to a little bit earlier because Marion had a, a prior commitment at four o'clock. So you all okay to come for 3.30 tomorrow? If you want to join us tomorrow? That'd be really please good. Do, yeah, please tell your friends. To, and um, we're going to start posting this out to um, a wider audience so that we get more people coming to join us, hopefully more ideas as well. So um, it will be lovely to see you tomorrow. Um, and we can um, carry on where we left off today and think about planning out next week as well, what we'll have for next week. So any bright ideas are welcome. If you're not already a member of the Midlife Switch Facebook group, go in and join because we're posting things in there. And you can also post things in there as well and swap with other people if you find useful resources. So that'd be fantastic. Brilliant. So lovely to see you all today. And um, sorry, Emma, you would like to say something. Um, can I just ask what the topic is tomorrow? Um, I don't know, actually. Julie, do you know what the topic is tomorrow? I will tell you, we changed the topic today. So we could go back to <laughs> spontaneous topic we changed the topic yesterday because everybody was really talking about we felt everybody wanted to talk about anxiety didn't we so the topic we really had we had for tomorrow was self-care okay all right let's do self-care tomorrow yeah. i will tell you what i've been doing <laughs> it's with self-care i've got all these parcels arriving oh my god just so that i don't turn into looking like a scary old lady <laughs> What can you do? You know, you get all you, you just have your you get on with your life, don't you? Have all these things that you do for yourself normally or have other people do for you, and then suddenly you can't go out of the house. So more tomorrow. So if you've got some self-help tips for us, bring them with you. Okay. Okay. Good to seeing you all. Oh, oh right. seeing Amy, she's got a camera on. Yay! <laughs> Thank you very much. It's lovely to see so many of you. Looking forward to seeing you again tomorrow. No, we need to sort out Nova's problem because she's still yeah, somehow... I'm going to, we could, we've had a conversation about it. Okay, fantastic. Excellent. Nova, I, Nova we'll swap emails today and I'll, I'll test it out with you later tonight. Can you sort my... And have well? a lovely, have yes, lovely rest Tracy, of your day, Tracy? everybody. Is that Tracy? Yes, please. please. I, okay, Tracy. Every time, I, every time I put put me when I do my um unmute myself and put the recorder on I can't hear you okay what I've just suggested to Nova is to re remove the app redo it and then I'll send you a note later I'm just jumping into a meeting now with Marion but after that I'll give you a little I'll drop you an email we'll fix the time to try it out yeah oh lovely thanks okay. thanks it's really Thank lovely to on. see you all I hope this is brightening your day not yeah. if it is yeah yeah <laughs> thank you we enjoyed it. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Okay.